Soyez les bienvenus au Nouveau-Brunswick. Welcome to New Brunswick. I'm here on Deer Island in New Brunswick. And I'm here for a motorcycle rally. And we're going to look at some of the things that uh, my buddies and I did during that motorcycle rally. Deer Island is just across the Bay of Fundy from Eastport, Maine. And in this direction, we have Campobello Island, New Brunswick. It was on Campobello Island where Franklin Delano Roosevelt had his summer place. We'll take a look at that later. So stay with us. Deer Island in New Brunswick, Canada is a tiny island in the Bay of Fundy. It's only seven and a half miles long and three miles wide. It boasts of a thriving aquaculture and fishing industry, from lobsters to seaweed. The islanders take every opportunity to profit from the sea around them. There are no supermarkets, no fast food restaurants, no traffic jams, and just about no crime on the island. This laid-back way of life makes the residents outgoing and friendly to strangers. If you are a sportsman, there's fishing at the piers in Chocolate Cove and Lord's Cove. There's also a great picnic area at the Deer Island Point Park. Here we see local fishermen harvesting seaweed. It's used commercially for its great content of nutrients and for medicine. It was interesting watching them haul these really heavy bundles onto the pier for shipment. As you can see by the height of the pier, the tides in the Bay of Fundy are phenomenal, dropping and rising some 30 feet twice a day. I was fascinated by this picturesque little white church in Lambert's Cove. It's always open, never locked up, and as a passerby you just have to go in to spend a few peaceful minutes here. I especially enjoy the simple rural architecture of the church. This motorcycle rally was put on by the Gold Wing Riders Association of New Brunswick. Now I drive a Silver Wing, which is a little smaller and more maneuverable than Gold Wing. But this club is open to everyone, so I was welcome, and I was the only American there. These bikes are $20,000 a piece and more, so as you can see, this can be an expensive but fun hobby. And now at the motorcycle rally, we're going to do something called a poker run. Now, a poker run gives you a slip like this with five spaces in it. And when you go to each location along the, in the island, you uh, draw a number. That number will go into one of these five spaces, which eventually will turn into a poker hand. And from that, they draw prizes at the end. It's a kind of fun way to go around and see the island. Stay with us. We'll show you what happens. <laughs> Well, after a ride around the island, 
We had a big salmon and steak roast at one of the two restaurants on the island, the Gardener House. As for the poker run, my hand was a dud, so I didn't win any prizes. I have to tell you that when we made our ride around the island, most of the natives came out on their porches. I'm sure they had never seen so many motorcycles at one time before. Motorcycle clubs like this one are great fun for people. We travel all over the world, meet other bikers, and have some great experiences. Many professional people are members of these clubs, lawyers, doctors, teachers. And it's a great way to relax and get away from the demands of a tough job. Off the Deer Island Point is the largest whirlpool in the Western world. It is known as the Old Sow. You can hear it snorting and grunting from the shoreline. The Bay of Fundy's phenomenal tides means the water runs very, very fast. And in this whirlpool, the water is going in every direction at the same time. Its awesome power is staggering. Just look at the speed of the water passing by the island. This is truly one of North America's most unusual sights. It's time to leave Deer Island. We bikers chartered an entire ferry to bring us over to Camp Bello Island. It's quite a sight, isn't it? To see all these motorcycles lined up and crossing the Bay of Fundy. We all had a great weekend and the president of the Gold Wing Riders Association of New Brunswick invited me back for any future rallies. I can't wait. I'm now on Campobello Island in New Brunswick, Canada. And behind me is the Franklin Delano Roosevelt home, summer home. He spent summers here from 1909 right up through 1939, off and on. This is an international park set aside by both the American and Canadian government. Let's take a look around. <laughs> Roosevelt Campobello International Park is a unique example of Canadian-American friendship. This park of 2,800 acres is a joint memorial by Canada and the U.S. and continues as a reminder of the close relationship between the two countries. President Roosevelt's mother, Sarah, bought this cottage in 1909 and later left it to her son, who returned here until 1939. Some 15 years ago, the hopes of mankind for a continuing era of international peace were raised to great heights when more than 60 nations solemnly pledged themselves not to resort to arms.
As I continued up the Bay of Fundy, I came to the city of Moncton. There are two worthwhile things. First is Magnetic Hill. This hill creates a bizarre optical illusion. You drive your car to a spot on the hill, put it into neutral, and weirdly enough, you start to roll backwards uphill. All of your senses are fooled because of the layout of the land. As you can see, even here in the video, it appears that the cars are rolling up, not down a hill. The second thing of interest in Moncton is the tidal bore on the Petit Kodiak River where it meets the Bay of Fundy. Here the tidal surge makes its way up the river in a very fast single wave. No one really knows what causes the famous tidal bore. It's assumed that the funnel-like shape of the Bay of Fundy makes for the swift rise of the ocean tides which wash up river for over 20 miles. Unlike Cape Cod, where the tide rises slowly, in Moncton it rises all at once. In summer, as we have tonight, the bore is only a ripple. But in the spring and autumn, or during strong winds, the wave can reach a height of over six feet. In a few hours after the bore has passed, the river is filled with 30 feet of water. To experience a different perspective of New Brunswick, I return there in the middle of winter. How about joining me in a visit to a giant dam and power plant? So welcome to Mactaquack. My name is Serge Nadeau, and I will be your tour guide. Um, here at Mactaquack, we're the largest hydro station in the Maritimes. We produce about 25% of all New Brunswick's power and we can also sell some power to uh, the United States, Quebec, and the other uh, maritime province. Okay. So here you can see our powerhouse, which is 625 feet long. You can see our six units in the middle of the powerhouse. When the light is on top of the, the light is on, on top of the unit, that means that the unit is working. Okay. We have two units generating today. It just depends uh, how much uh, water we have or how much current we have. So this here is our unit control board, and this mainly tells us information on the units. We have one of these control boards for each unit, and uh, if there is a problem with the unit, this control board will tell us here. So now we're at the second level of the building here, uh, which mainly has the generators. Okay? Downstairs there's another level that has the uh, turbines. So we're going to go see the generator. It's really noisy down there, so just follow me. It's our intake structure. The water level up here is about 135 feet, and where the main dam is, it's 190 feet. Um, and uh, the intake structure here is made of concrete, which is about 45 feet thick at the top and 200 feet thick at the bottom. At the left there, you can see our spillway gates, which are only used in the springtime for excess water only. So the, um, the water doesn't come up over the dam. We will let the water through here. The capital city of New Brunswick is Fredericton. Located in the center of the province on the St. John River, the area was first settled by the French, then the English, and finally by 2,000 Americans 
who during the American Revolution had been loyal to the British crown. If you are a frequent viewer of this program, you must know that I love to visit area churches. The Christ Church Cathedral is located along the river. It is the main center for the Church of Canada in New Brunswick. It was Queen Victoria herself, as head of the Church of England, who made Fredericton a cathedral town in 1845. Cathedral is one of the finest examples of decorated Gothic architecture in North America. The church contains many examples of fine woodworking and has a magnificent stained glass window above the main altar. In the very center of the city is the old British military compound. It was here that the British Army was stationed from 1785 to 1869 and the Canadian Army from 1883 to 1914. This is the old militia arms store which was used to house military weapons and ammunition for the Royal New Brunswick Regiment. Officer Square lies in the middle of the city. It is one of the most beautiful and historic areas of Fredericton. Here I found the York Sunbury Museum. The purpose of this museum is to make the history of central New Brunswick come alive through displays on the First Nations, Acadians, and the American loyalist who founded Fredericton. Then there are the officers' quarters in the Fredericton military compound. These exhibits demonstrate what daily life was like for members of the British and Canadian armies. The artifacts and old uniforms are genuine and depict a long ago era, a time which would seem quite foreign to us today. Inside the museum, they built a replica of what trench warfare was like during World War I. Armies on both sides occupied these wet, cold, and dangerous trenches, with the killing grounds in between called no man's land. The preserved frog you see here was once alive. It weighed 42 pounds and is called the Coleman frog. It is perhaps the largest frog ever known. I think before it really got the hang of it, it took me about two weeks. No one doesn't want to do anything though when it's cold. That's right. Here goes nothing, huh? And it has the consistency of bubble gum. No holes? No, no holes yet. <laughs> cool. The people of New Brunswick are a hardy people. Even with a frozen river, temperatures well below freezing, and snow and ice everywhere, these folk carry on life enjoying what nature has given them.
The Provincial Legislative Assembly Building is the seat of government in New Brunswick. I was very warmly received there by the staff and invited to video the building's interior. And although one of the members of the assembly invited me into a legislative session as his guest, it was forbidden to videotape there. But the building, dating from 1882, has a unique circular staircase which creaked and groaned as I climbed it, but nevertheless affords a unique perspective of this old building. Fredericton's Treehouse Museum boasts of a circular staircase which looks like the inside of a tree. So if we go up, it's, it is a it's, spiral? It's a spiral, yeah. Let's go take a look. Sure. And this is the trunk of a tree? Yep. The tree that's been fractured by the wind, so you can see the sky above. took someone an awful lot of hours. Was it you? No, no, it wasn't me. It's a retired uh, the chief of the uh, Fredericton Fire Department. Built this over a 35-year period. River, 112 kilometers from Fredericton, is St. John, located on the Bay of Fundy. It is the oldest incorporated city in Canada and New Brunswick's largest. As in other major cities of Canada, St. John has a very impressive inside connection with stores, banks, city hall, an open market, Hotels, restaurants, museums, sport complexes, and shopping malls are all interconnected by glassed-in walkways. My favorite part of the inside connection is the old city market. This is just like Europe, and there's so much to see and buy, I just loved it. From salted fish to mussels to fresh fruit and vegetables, everything is available here at this open market and at reasonable prices, too. So starting in King's Square, near the Loyalist Burial Ground, you can enter the inside connection and work your way down the hill to the harbor by a series of interconnected buildings. This restaurant is owned by none other than Don Cherry. Do you remember him? He was the very popular but rather bombastic Boston Bruins coach during some of their best years. He's very active in St. John's sports, has a local radio program as well. The waterfront, as you see here, is very active, with exports of wheat and manufactured goods produced in the Canadian interior. The tides here are phenomenal due to the long, narrow Bay of Fundy, rising and falling some 30 feet, even 50 feet during storms and flood tides. These docks have to be built high in order to allow for such a great surge of water. We'll leave you here at St. John's Aquatic Center until next time.
And that's our show for today. I hope you've gained some insight into New Brunswick, the Canadian province to the northeast of New England. And until I see you again on the next Let's Visit show, this is your host, Dave Welsh, saying au revoir. <laughs>